of LA Fish Guys. We're here servicing the 400 gallon Bowfront Aquarium once again. Two weeks ago, we added three trigger fish to the tank. Uh, there's a clown trigger fish, there's a pink tail trigger fish, and there's also a um, blue jaw trigger fish, the female. Um, last week all three were here. This week, I don't see the blue jaw trigger at the moment, but we'll uh, wait till we put food in the tank to pass judgment as to whether she's still with us or not. We also need to um, change out the uh, fluorescent light bulbs on the algae scrubber, so I thought I would show you how that's done today. The situation with the uh, fluorescent bulbs on the algae scrubber is they unfortunately lose their intensity and spectrum relatively quickly, and so it's strongly suggested that you change out those bulbs every uh, three months. Well. As you saw with my own tank at home, I'm not always on top of everything. And it's been almost five months um, that we've been running the bulbs in this scrubber. It's still producing algae, but um, I have the bulbs with me today, and we're going to go ahead and change those. So I've got all the corals pulled out of the tank, so we can go ahead and clean it now. Uh, so let's uh, get to work. So you can see we've got all the coral decorations pulled out of the tank now. It's just the basic rock structure or foundation inside there. Uh, the new set of corals, the clean set, is lined up here on the uh, blanket on the floor in front of the tank. I've kind of developed a little bit of a procedure or process uh, for pulling those corals. Since it's a bit of a, a schlep from here all the way down uh, through the garage and across the driveway to carry all those boxes up, what I do is I bring in one box at a time and I'm able to take dirty corals out, put in the empty box, carry that down, and then bring the next box back up. So I thought I would show you, um, here we are, uh, there's the pink tail trigger fish, who seems to be doing real well in the tank, uh, is not aggressive, and uh, seems to be relatively uh, passive and happy. Uh, then there is the uh, clown trigger fish, which is a little bit smaller. Uh, not aggressive at all, um, and hopefully it won't become. And then I have not seen yet the um, blue jaw trigger, but I'm sure that she'll come out at some point. Um, and here's my little school of heniocus. I think we started out with ten of them, and I believe there's seven or eight of them that are left. Uh, I was hoping that they would tend to school a little bit more uh, as a group, um, but schooling is a defensive strategy, and if the fish are feeling comfortable in the tank, uh, then um, they don't feel they need to school or be defensive. Uh, this is a green bird wrasse right here. It's one of the only few green fish in the aquarium, in the saltwater aquarium hobby. And then, of course, there's the... Uh, Faculas or double saddle butterflies. I'm not exactly sure how to tell the difference between the two, but uh, there are three of those in here. And they will be my um, special little butterflies as opposed to, say, the um, golden butterflies, which I was really tempted, but the price of those has really jumped up lately. There's a little um, pygmy angel, a bicolor pygmy angel. I have had zero uh, success with pygmy angels lately. Uh, I've gone through a number of lemon peels, flames, um, venustus. Uh, there's a few others that we tried that we just uh, didn't have success with. And it seems to be specifically the pygmy angels. I don't know if there's an issue in my quarantine system at home uh, or um, if it's the way the fish are collected but I've been having a lot of lack of success with the um, 
pygmy angels. And then there's a single little hawkfish. And then, of course, there are the, the clownfish. We did, unfortunately, lose the original big female. Just don't think she was able to adjust to the system. It had a lot more flow to it um, and, and a lot more uh, other uh, entities or fishes in it. Um, it's unfortunate. Uh, she was probably a number of years old as she did come out of that previous reef tank, so I was kind of bummed about that. There is the, her partner, which is the larger of the group right there. That would be the partner. The rest of them are all new percula clownfish. So we have got to the point, algae-wise, where the little green dots begin to grow on the acrylic panels. And the long uh, handle pad on a stick that I have, I can't apply enough pressure to rub those off. Uh, so what I've had to do is get out the aquarium cleaning magnets and these I'm kind of nervous and afraid of because if you're not paying attention you can really scratch the tank. So what I've done here is I have my magnet which is the one that goes on the inside inside a little nylon web sleeve. I'm going to um, place a filter pad between the acrylic panel and the magnet and on the outside one the LED lights that we received, uh, the aqua rays, come with a, uh, a nice, almost like a felt sleeve. Well, I took those sleeves because I don't need them anymore, and I think they offered them to help clean the fixtures, but I sliced them up because they're a really, really soft pad, and I'm using that as a buffer on the magnet on the outside. So it makes the magnets a little less strong. They don't grasp each other as much, um, but it does offer a little safety factor in there. Uh, so as long as I avoid the gravel line in the tank, I shouldn't pick up any stones. I'll certainly make sure there's nothing in the pad before I hook it up. So um, let's go ahead and uh, clean the inside of the tank with the aquarium cleaning magnets. And so with the two magnets protected with the felt pads on either side, I'll go ahead and place one on the inside and the opposing one here on the outside. So with the two magnets grasping each other now, we'll begin to go back and forth, the magnet on the inside being pulled tight up against the acrylic, but that pad and such will begin to wipe the algae. We just want to pay attention and make sure that we're not scratching anything. While the use of aquarium cleaning magnets makes the job considerably easier, I can't stress enough to check the magnets before placing them on the tank and then paying attention as you move the two halves back and forth in the cleaning process. It's always the first scratch that's the worst. And while they can be polished out, it's a very involved process to do so. Okay, so we've managed to go through and do the front panel, the bowed panel as well as the two end panels. We've got the seams done, but I've avoided the gravel line. So what I'm probably gonna do now is take the little pad on a stick and go through and take care of the gravel line. This being our pad on a stick, it allows me to reach further into the tank. I'll use this to clean the algae at the gravel line. When working down near the gravel or sand, it's best to push the gravel away first this will help minimize or decrease the odds of picking up a granule of gravel or sand that could cause some scuffs or scratches in this eye level area of the aquarium. With all of the decorative corals out of the tank, it's just the rock foundation. This allows me to go through with a big bristle brush and clean the debris that's settled on the different shelves inside there. It may suspend it back into the system, but that's where the filter system can filter that debris back out of the tank. So let's go through and clean the rock foundation a little bit. Using the bristle brush, I can sweep away the debris that have settled down between the decorative corals. The sweeping of the rocks helps decrease uneaten or excess foods that will eventually lead to elevated nutrient levels 
as well as potential algae problems. Ultimately, this helps manage the overall cleanliness inside the aquarium. And now that I've cleaned the rocks or the foundation in there and stirred up some of the debris that settled on there, I mentioned the filter system will filter that out. And that's exactly where the pleated cartridge comes into play. It's hooked up with this high volume 4,500 gallon hour water pump that draws directly from the tank and returns directly to the tank. Half that water flow passes through this pleated cartridge and that's what traps out those fine particles within the water itself. And of course, in addition is the refrigeration unit, a wet dry trickle filter, there's a protein skimmer back there, the UV sterilizer, and of course then there is the um, algae scrubber. And that's what we're gonna be changing the bulbs on later today. So I'll catch you uh, right after the break. Hi, my name's Dean from Tropical Imports here in Glendale, California. We have all different types of tropical fish, freshwater and saltwater. We have reptiles, freshwater plants, goldfish, saltwater invertebrates. We've got all different types of little aquariums here for betas, for tropical fish, mini nano reef for plants, saltwater fish. I've got all different types of bowls. Whatever you like, we've got it. Would you like to reduce your nitrate and phosphate as well as algae problems? Consider the Turbos Aquatics LED Algae Scrubber line, which consists of the L2, L3, and L4 models. All units include dual drain system, slotted pipe, growth screen, bulkheads, and dual high quality growth spectrum optimized LED lights and heat sinks. The L-Series algae scrubbers are easily installed and externally mounted either above the aquarium or placed over your existing filter system. Control aquarium nutrients naturally using algae. For more information, visit TurbosAquatics.com. Have you made your plans yet to attend the Marine Aquarium Expo this coming April 6th and 7th of 2013? This is the largest aquarium consumer trade show in North America and a destination spot for marine hobbyists and coral frag enthusiasts. Held at the Orange County Fair and Event Center and featuring over 70 exhibitors, speakers, demonstrations, and a huge opportunity drawing. There's even a fin zone for entertaining young hobbyists. That's the Marine Aquarium Expo at the Orange County Fairgrounds this coming April 6th and 7th, Saturday, 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. and Sunday 11 a.m. to 5 p.m. Adults $15, senior and military only $10, and kids under 12 are free. For more information, visit MarineAquariumExpo.com. Tropical Fish Hobbyist Magazine has been the authoritative source for aquarium keepers since the first legendary issue rolled off the presses in 1952. With informative articles month after month about the fascinating world of freshwater aquariums, saltwater setups, paludariums, ponds, and more, illustrated in crisp detail by the world's top aquatic photographers, TFH covers it all. And now, with subscriptions starting at $13.95 and a mobile digital edition you can take with you wherever you go, TFH is your ultimate resource for all things aquatic. So now that we've got all the coral decorations out of the tank, we've gone through and cleaned the inside of the tank as well as the gravel line in the tank and cleaned the rock foundation. It's now time to do the water change. I can comfortably carry eight five-gallon jugs of water in the van, so that's 40 gallons. It's only 10% of the size of the tank. I'd like to be able to do bigger, and on occasion, just like the fancy cylinder tank, I will do a large 100-gallon water change. But in general, it's going to be 40 gallons every two weeks. The first thing we want to do before we start vacuuming the gravel is double-check the salinity. 
This is the hydrometer that I'm going to use. It's a floating needle hydrometer. It works fine for me. There's a lot of other methods. What helps me determine how, how accurate this is, is I'll use this on the new salt water that I get delivered at home. And typically, what's in my customer's tank, salinity-wise, is also what's in those jugs at home. And as long as this reads those same things, I'm okay with that. Because if that's the salinity that came out of the ocean, that's the salinity the fish in the fish tank can live in. So let's go ahead and test this. And even though it's a little grungy, 1.021 is what this reads. And that's approximately what this would read if I was testing the real ocean water at home. So I'm okay with the salinity. Let's go ahead and start vacuuming the gravel. And with my buckets down below and my siphon tube in hand, we'll go ahead and start vacuuming the gravel. So what purpose does vacuuming the gravel provide? Well, in addition to getting the old dirty water out of the tank, the vacuum can also take dirt and debris along with that old dirty water. And by pushing the vacuum into the gravel and releasing the siphon, water is drawn through the vacuum attachment and begins to suck up the granules of gravel. As it does so, it fluffs up the gravel, allowing the lighter bits to float upwards. By controlling the siphon and its strength, I can extract debris and not suck the gravel out of the aquarium. In addition, the movement of the gravel releases gas bubbles trapped within the granules, eliminating another potential issue, hydrogen sulfate or sand bed gas. And now that we've vacuumed the gravel and taken that old water out, it's time to put the new water in. I previously mentioned I had worked out a process for exchanging the three boxes of dirty and three boxes of clean coral decorations into the house. But I've not yet worked out a process for carrying in the eight five gallon jugs of new salt water yet. There is an elevator in this house and I could look into a cart of some sorts. But until recently, it was just as quick and easy to carry the five gallon jugs of water, one in each arm, up the two flights of steps. But as my foot becomes sore, I may have to explore a less strenuous means of getting the new salt water into the aquarium. So with the tank filled back up with its new salt water and turned back on, I can now begin to redecorate the tank with the coral decorations. Make sure to come on back for part two as we service the algae scrubber, change the light bulbs in the scrubber, and find out if we still have that third trigger fish in the tank.